Boom. What's going on, Skip? How are you, man? Are you good? I'm good. I'm trying to figure out my setup. Well, that's part of it, I think. So yeah. It seems like you, you've done uh, done pretty well by comparison. So <laughs> Is that right? It's, yeah. I mean, some of that's probably my fault, right? Like, be a gracious host. Maybe tell me exactly how this thing works. So let's just blame me. But yeah, you got you got on pretty smooth. You got got on really well. So. All right. Well, it was my first experience, so you, huh? you you did a good job. Give me a little bit of directions. Well, thanks, but that's only because I've made the mistake with others, right? <laughs> and, and had to learn from the experience. So, um, all right, things okay down there? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, finished just finished the day here at the school, so I'm um, I'm just hanging out at the school here. That way I don't have to try to drive or do anything in additional additional to uh, our conversation so I can focus. And do things well, I appreciate that. I appreciate but, that. Um, how, I've tried how about you? Are you at home? I'm actually in the office. You're at the office. So, okay. Right. So with, with COVID, what we've decided to do is uh, Johnny is, for lack of a better term, our essential worker. Okay. And so he gets this space as much as he needs it. Um, and then he was actually down at Texas Tech doing an install, mm -hmm. uh, this week. And I came into the office four days in a row and it's the first time that's happened. March, in a maybe. Line. Yeah. So what, what do you, what do you typically, how, how many days are you typically in the office? In, in the real world? <laughs> Instead of <laughs> well, this no, strange? No, no, since COVID. Oh, since COVID. None. Is it, okay. Yeah. Um, and that's. I don't necessarily have to be in the office, right? So if, if you and I needed to talk about something, well, which we have, right? We'll, yeah. we'll text or do whatever. And so I usually sit at the end of my kitchen island and have to apologize for my dog barking when people walk by uh, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So so I have, I have an opening question for you. Okay. So I've been trying to get better and better at a proper interview, right? Like respecting you, people we have on have come on yeah. and uh last week um dylan johnson who um elite level cyclist also a coach and does an amazing job he's got a great youtube channel where he really dials in on science but it's cycling yeah. specific was on and he's won a mountain bike series three times that's um the short term for it is the nue national ultra endurance um and i did a few of those races back in the day when I was less gray. And I just referred to it as the NUE. Kept going along, talking to Dylan. And I got home, my wife was like, hey, you know, most of the people that are listening to that have no idea what you were talking about. So yeah, trying to get better. That was, trying to, that was, that's, but that was the life you were living. So you did, it was just normal to you. Right. right. But uh, I would have not known that. Yeah, uh, not only do I need to respect people who come on with me about how to use Instagram, probably ought to respect our listeners as well, right? <laughs> so, but so I'm trying to do some homework, right? Because like you and I have talked several times and uh, like we knew of you, right? From your NFL career, uh, yeah. 10, 10 years, if I have that right. Yeah. Um, uh, I know you had some injuries at the end, right? But for people who don't know, uh, small high school, uh, growing up, K State, four years, um, Hall of Famer, collegiately, right? Yeah. Um, and then quite a bit of longevity for the NFL might be a simple way to put it, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I get get online, and I'm just looking things up because I want to have my details dialed, and I come across the videos you have made that are on Vimeo, oh. and are. Are those for classes at school? Because the yeah. timing looks like that might be the case. Yeah. Is that how you started like trying to communicate with kids yeah. during COVID? How's that gone for you? Yeah. Um, you know, it has its challenges, no doubt. Um, those videos I mostly did in April and May of last year. So I was just trying to figure out a way um, to, to one, just remind students of like what exercise, what's what exercise. So that's sometimes a question, even though you might've done it a hundred different times with them. So for some of them, I just did just the exercise, maybe had a brief explanation of it. 
And then some of those I did for new students that had never been in our athlete development program. So mostly incoming uh, freshmen. So in those videos, I did more in-depth um, explanations of what we're doing, try to, the why we were doing them, those sort of things. So that way they could look at it because I wasn't concerned with them really even trying to get under a barbell or anything during that time. It was just more of them just kind of be, getting an idea of what we do and uh, kind of the thought behind it and understanding that process. So the videos were, I think, I think at the beginning were pretty, pretty effective. I saw a lot of people watch them. And then as okay. we went, as the summer, as the summer went on or got into the summer, I think they were a little bit less engaged, which I understand. Um, and then we were able to start with some outdoor conditioning in the middle of June. And, and then we got them back in the weight room for a while in, in the beginning of July. So I think, I think, you know, under those circumstances, we were kind of thrown into it. I think it worked pretty well. Um, and it gave some of the kids a head start, especially the ones that were motivated. Well, that yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's an interesting conversation by itself, right? Is, is who are the self-motivated yeah. uh, athletes and, yeah. and some, yeah. I it's hard, it's in hard. the gym. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. It's just hard when you're, when you're remote or virtual or whatever, and you are not with the athlete, it's a little bit harder to be able to motivate them in the same way. Um, we did, we, we've done uh, Zoom calls for workouts. So I actually can watch the kids move and, and do the exercises and things. But for the freshmen, it was, it, I didn't do as much of that with them. Um, it was more about them just watching the longer videos, the explanations. And then I would, we were doing some assessments. Um, I did two or three assessments with them where they would send me them doing a body weight squat or them doing oh, a, okay. an RD, RDL or hip hinge. So I could kind of evaluate how they were doing um, as far as, you know, watching the videos and be able to apply those things. Gotcha. So I did some of that. So here's a key question. So I'm looking at these and there's one that's introduction to line drill footwork. Yeah. And you've got the icky and stick. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I have to like, did any of the kids know who Icky Woods was? No. Like, did you have to explain it? No way. No. No, it's just what I call it because, I mean, when I learned it, that's what we called it. I don't know what even it's called now, but we are going to do it as part of our warm-ups, um, just some footwork stuff, and that was something to introduce them to. So when we would have them in class, that would be something we'd do as part of our warm-up. So, yeah. I, well, I, did, my, did my daughter do that? Was she doing that, or did I do that? I think no, I did that. No, it was just you. It was just me. Um, it was just yeah. you. Um, I would have lo like, loved to yeah. see in like, the demonstration, yeah. right? Um, yeah. But then I will say this, this is really a tangent, but so I'm watching the video, right? And I'm thinking, where's he at? No. Right? And then it kind of pans over. Is that your place? Yeah. Because that like, looks like a pretty good, good place for like a cookout. Yeah. Game of horse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, once this breaks up, um, we need to come down and and yeah, out for a little yeah. Bit, so. it, it's it's a the, it's a nice training place. The the yard is decently young, long. I can do some like tempo runs on there, about probably forty yards, fifty yard tempo runs. Oh, okay. It's it grades down a little bit, so you can do some downhill speed work. So it's just a slight grade, or you can do some slight grade uh, hill work. So you know it's it's pretty solid. And you, then again, like you said, you've got you've got uh, your concrete. For the basketball hoop, I rolled out a, a rubber mat. My daughters will do broad jumps on the rubber mat, so I'm always trying to get them to see if they can hit a PR on their broad jump. Um, so we have that out there in the backyard. So pretty active uh, backyard. And the trampoline that we have back there is a lot of use of that. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, I, I will joke with my wife and I watch those shows like Love It and List It or like those just home shows in general. People are buying and selling houses. And I'll just laugh because, like, some of the things you just went through are things I think about, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. no way, that driveway's too slanted. <laughs> like, you can't shoot there. Yeah, yeah. There's not enough room in the back to do it. Like, and yeah. I just imagine, like, so just imagine, like, back to back, like, your family's moving, you're on a show like that, and we're on a show like that. Mm -hmm. Totally different world. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know what the realers would do. It's just yeah. kind of funny to think about. So, um, like... You know, we're kind of, 
I'm kind of goofing around with it, but so now you're training high school athletes, uh-huh. yet you have this experience like playing and working with NFL athletes, right? And kind of the cliche yeah. one percenters. Yeah. Um, was there, so I'm going to kind of go top down, like given that you played in the league, you know, you know more than most, like was there a time that in the weight room you transitioned almost to another coach in the weight room where people were looking at you for feedback and in, in what you were doing? Um, I don't know that I would say that. Um, I think in general, most of it, most of those uh, athletes when they get to that level have a kind of a an idea of things that they've done and they that they feel like has been productive for them. Um, most athletes are like there'll be some athletes that are just so immensely talented, like they don't really pay attention to that. But right. most of them, even I mean, the best of the best are. There's a reason they're the best of the best. Of the best. So uh, you know, our people are pretty engaged with no, things they know they need, and they're and, and sometimes it's mental. Um, they know they need to be ready to play. Um, so I think that was kind of my experience typically um, in the locker room and, and around those guys. So everybody kind of had maybe what we did would be because, um, you know, we had a program we were doing, but there was always certain things that you just felt like you wanted to do just so you felt in your mind you were you were ready. You know, it, it made sense to you. So I wouldn't say I kind of turned into coach later in, but I was always very, very interested in the process of improving and getting, getting ready. Um, throughout my career. Now, when I was a young, young athlete, it was just getting better. I mean, just tell me what I have to do to get better. But as time went on, it's like trying to dissect what helped me and what, when did I feel the best? You know, how was I trained? What was I doing at those times? And that was just me reflecting on what I was doing as a, as a player. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So what made you then decide, uh, when you were transitioning out of out of playing mm-hmm. to to go into because you had seminar sports performance yeah. that's how we met um, was that always in your mind while you were playing or how did that come about it um, I would say probably the last five years that I play was playing I was kind of thinking what what would be my next step you know after I'm done playing because. You know, you're playing every year and you're and you're getting ready, but you're in my mind I'm like, okay, well, if I don't make a team, like what what would be my next step? What do I what am I passionate about? What do I want to do when I'm done? Um, so those thoughts were were happening probably year five or six. My brother my brother my brother Tim started a, a training business in the Wichita area and I was a little bit involved with that. So that was that was happening, I think. Gosh, it was probably, it was probably like maybe my last year in Philadelphia, maybe year five or six um, during that time frame. And I just knew, I didn't know exactly where I was going to live at that time, if I was going to end up, you know, in a city I was playing at, or if I was going to move back to Kansas or what I was going to do. So um, I was just, but I kind of was starting to wrap my brain around maybe coaching. And um, I had some injuries at the end of, at the end of my career. And I was able to be around um, some some really great coaches in addition to the coaches I had in the NFL uh, from a from a, a physical therapy standpoint and rehab some of the things that we're doing and you know places around the country and that kind of kind of gave me the thought of you know that would be that would be something I think I'd really enjoy um, doing in Kansas at that time in Kansas City area there really weren't very many sports performance like oh i didn't know that type places at the time when i opened that business um now after three or four years like it was it was growing like everybody was getting involved in that type of um, business well, you, and I, you, sh- you showed them the way so <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know about that but, <laughs> but uh it's but but yeah so that was kind of the transition it was just what am i passionate about like what do i enjoy um and then i knew i wanted to I wanted to coach, but I didn't know that I necessarily wanted to be a football coach. Um, and I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, if I was going to be a football coach, if I was going to be at the college level or the high school level, you know, 
I didn't, I didn't know exactly, but I knew I was really passionate about strength conditioning. And um, I know the impact it had on my life as far as growing up in a small town and, and developing just from that consistency of doing, doing the, the right things in training and, and then being able to move on to college. And again, I just know it had a big impact on my, on my career. I never, I never would have played college football and, and I would definitely never played in the NFL. Like if I didn't prepare um, like I was able to, and, you know, I talked to, or I actually was tech, texting back, back and forth with uh, Doug Boucher. Yeah, he, he gave me some crap last night. <laughs> <laughs> he said you were, he was waiting for the, the best for last, leaving the best for last is what he said to me. Yeah, so. he was one, he was like, how's Simon before me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. And yeah, and, and Coach Boucher was a big part of that. You know, um, uh, my last two years in high school, you know, he really took an interest into to helping me um, get to the next level. And there were the nice. goals I had as far as, you know, I wanted to run a sub 1100 meters in high school and, you know, obviously wanted to go on to play college. And those were things that like, I just had zeroed in from a from a goal standpoint. When I was and when I was training, like in my mind, like, Hey, I want to win a state championship. I want to do X, Y, and Z. And I had my brothers that were older than me that I already always kind of set the bar. So I was sure. able to raise the bar a little bit about what they did. So where did that sense of standards come from then? Like, was it your brothers or was that like, did you, were you have, was the high school staff very progressive um, in that um, sense or? Well, the high school I went to was very, um, it's like a, it's a, it's a power. And at that time we were three, a, but it was a three, a power, um, really good football team. And at that time it was, uh, when I was my, or well, the other thing is my brothers are older than me, significant. So my oldest brother's 10 years older. Oh, my other okay. brothers so we're not talking older. like you're yeah. a freshman and they're a yeah, junior. Yeah. Gotcha. So I was able to kind of sit there and watch, you know, and see, and that helped me, I think a lot as, as a, as a young kid. And then, and then we had this program that was, in my mind, was, I mean, just this awesome thing, which it is. But as a young, a young kid, it's, it's even bigger in your mind than, sure. you know. So, so I had that in front of me. And then, again, I, was, I always call myself a late, a late bloomer. Like, you know, I really probably didn't start to really develop until maybe the end of my sophomore year, start of my junior year. And then I, you know, even – after that, it was like my senior year was probably midway through my senior year. I was starting to probably separate myself a little bit more. But gotcha. But yeah, it was a. Uh... Well, I listened to that Life of Fits. I think it is podcast you were on. I think just last month. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you referenced that. Um, I think you said that like you weren't heavily recruited. Mm -hmm. Is that? Do you think just because you're physically were a little bit of a late bloomer, and then? Suddenly, yeah. K State had this sort of golden nugget that no one else knew about. I don't. I don't know about that. I, I mean, I'm going mean, to go ahead and say that. I think. I think. I think that, your history speaks for itself. But I appreciate the humility. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Um, I think. I think that that was part of the process. I think one being from a small town um, is part of it too. The recruiting was different then as it yeah. is now. We didn't have Twitter. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have those things that like highlight yourself and promote yourself to coaches. So it was a little bit harder at that time. My connection was my brother went to, he was at K-State. So oh, okay. that gave me, that gave me a, an in. So, I mean, as far as them knowing who I was and, and those things. So I think if he wouldn't have been there, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they would have offered me or not. You know, I would like to think they would have, but. Sure. Who knows? Brooks Barta was there too, and then our okay. head coach, uh, uh, Roger Barta, he was our head football coach, and they had a connection with K-State, which helped a lot as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, I always find that interesting, and um, I do wonder, like, do you think that that experience where, you know, you felt like you were a slow developer translates in how you see your kids you work with today? Yes. I, I, I always – project our kids you know like i'm like you know i think i think in two or three years this kid you know because because if i see if i see work ethic and i see um a desire to, to improve like 
I just think that the sky's the limit, you know, for kids. And a lot of them, it's hard for them to understand that. You know, I think for me, it was my, it was my sophomore, it was beginning of my, right before my sophomore year of football is when it clicked for me, like what I needed to do to prepare. And it kind of fell in love with the process of doing that. The earlier a kid can like catch that bug, the better, you know, because I mean, you're, you're limited in time especially if you're going to try to go on and play at the college level. Like there's, there's a limited amount of time. You can't wait till you're a junior, unless again, we were talking about the great, great, great athletes that, you know, are going to be there regardless. But for, for somebody like me, but to me, I just, you just have to develop into that. And it takes a lot of time, a lot of work for me. If I probably wouldn't have started until my junior year or, or whatever, I would have been too late for me and I probably wouldn't have the opportunity. So, yeah, I do. I do look at our kids that way. And I, I'm like, I, I think probably think the best out of, of them when I see those qualities in the students. So how do you balance? So for folks who don't know, you use our system, um, mm -hmm. used to it at Seminole Sports Performance and now at Gartner. Mm -hmm. um, and so like I saw Tom Morris pop on at IU. And so different, different group, right? Different popula populations. Yeah. Like, in terms of, and we can just talk in scientific terms because I'm, I'm not looking for a commercial or anything. Like, but I'm, I, you're going to look at how you handle data differently yeah. than like Tom would or somebody else. So, so how do you kind of take a, a scientific approach or you know, a metric-based approach, if you want to call it that, and mm -hmm. apply it to kids that are that young? Like what's your process? Well, I mean, at the beginning, it's, it's to me, it's a, learning to train so i'm not concerned with the data at all at that point you know it's just learning the movements you know learning the process of training um those things and that can take a, a long time <laughs> and i think i said it on the show uh on the other podcast like i'm not in any hurry to, to develop a a kid faster than whatever he's gets him as a freshman i could care less what he squats i, I could care less what he benches i don't have it doesn't doesn't matter to me at all um those things um so that's kind of my base it's like learn to train you know that that may take a year year and a half like i'm going to take my time with that um when they when they when they've kind of developed you know some training age and i'm more looking at the data as far as making adjustments to to training loads is probably probably the, the biggest way I use it for our kids. So we typically do um, a four week um, training cycle, and then in in the fourth week, and this is during our off seasons. And on the fourth week, I call it power week. So on our power week, we we're, we're using more of a power percentage that, that they can uh, achieve higher wattage. And, and during that week, that's when I kind of readjust maxes off of, off of what they're doing. So our goal, my, my goal with them as, as they progress and they get to that next level um, is for them to be more explosive um, with moderate intensities um, that's kind of my goal. And then we train off of that. So we obviously train heavy and we tra train lighter. We do volume. So but that it, over time, that's what I'm looking at as my metric that I am over time trying to improve. So if a student comes in and they're at a 600 watt front squat, you know, and, and then I know a year later they're at 850 watt front squat, that you know, that's where I want to be. Like, that's where I have, have that's how I want to grow them. I don't necessarily, in their mind, like, they don't, we don't really max. We don't do, like, 1RMs. Um, but I, when we do go heavier, then I'm able to look at the velocities and, and make adjustments off of that. So some of our athletes are more explosive, some of our athletes are a little slower and stronger. My philosophy is I my 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 thought is I want them to be become more powerful. That's 
that's my goal. Jumping, I'm, you know, vert vertical jump, uh, broad jumps, triple broad jumps, triple jumps. Those are also things that I look at as far as how the programs are working. 20 yard sprints, uh, flying sprints and those things. So um, that's kind of my, my philosophy with it. We do train heavy, but we train heavy to become more powerful and more explosive. Um, so I don't know, it's with, with the elite form, it gives us the ability to do that. So do the kids, um, like how, what's the impact of that then like culturally, like there, like we've, like I've seen our stuff get yeah. like certain athletes jacked up just because the yeah. there's now a score, yeah. but is it more pervasive like in the area where like are the kids proud of their weight room basically because yeah. they know they're doing something others aren't? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I think I, hopefully they take great pride in it and they should, um, that they have the opportunity to, to train in an environment like this, but I do think they, they do appreciate it and they work and they compete. And that's one thing, you know, having that feedback allows them to not, I mean, compete against each other, but compete with themselves and, and, and improve themselves. So that's, that's one of those things that I don't think you can even equate like how important that is to, to having the ability to have that intent rep after rep after rep after rep after rep. It's not just that there's not a lazy rep, you know, you, you want, you want that intent every single time you get under a barbell or get a barbell in your hands or whatever you're doing with it. Well, and then, uh, like culturally as well, it's not like it's what you were trying to do is coming from someone who mm -hmm. doesn't obviously have a lot of quality experience. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's like, I hear many coaches and I'd be curious to know if you feel the same. We'll talk about how, like, I'm not a big believer in kids are different these days. Cause I think that's a lazy cliche in and of itself, mm -hmm. but it does seem like there is, maybe it's the internet, but a broad desire to understand what we're doing. Yeah. And know we're to, kind of doing things the right way. Yeah. And um, like, do, are you, do you feel kind of the same way about like kind of the population that's that age now and kind of having that need? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's the case with the majority of, of them to me, to me. Um, I do think, there are some kids that are interested in that part of it. Um, mm -hmm. Probably more somebody that would be like me. If I, if I was a kid, I would have been interested in that. Um, but some of them, it's just, it's just how we train. Like, it's just what we do. You know, I don't, okay. some of them are going to, going to know much of a difference because that's, you know, this is my second year here. Um, you know, so that's just that they just, that's how they train. You know? Well, that is a good point. Right. Cause yeah. when you're that young, yeah. You don't know what you don't know to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for them, you know, I think if you're in a college level and you haven't been exposed to that before and, you know, that might be like, oh, this is why we're doing X, Y, and Z. But, you know, I explain, I, a lot of times I explain, I'm explaining to them like what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish so they can see their goal. And then, you know, there's, there's the metrics like, Hey, a thousand watts on a back squat or, you know, a 2000 watt hang power clean, you know, some like standards that, right. that they're trying to achieve, you know, through um, their training and, and those things where before, Hey, you know, I, I want to have a 400 pound back squat or I want to, you know, do it's, it's similar. It's just a different way of thinking about what we're trying to accomplish um, as they progress, you know, their junior and senior year. Um, and they're looking at those metrics. Yeah, there, there has never been a shortage of, a, of, a, of goals to put in front of athletes, right? So, yeah. I mean, it kind of reminds me of, we had Bob Alejo on a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And uh, like, I think he's pretty well known now for saying, like, if, you know, tell me what you're doing or what you call it now, and I'll, I'll tell you what <laughs> yeah. we used to call it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so similar but different, like you mentioned, you had the goal of running 100 right mm -hmm. under x time mm -hmm. and so how do i get there 
yeah. quality training. And that can be the same with how much power you generate on a squat. It's just, yeah. 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 And it's, and, and I think, you know, you're, you're able to see variations with the, with the elite form on from week to week. I, I do like it a lot for in season as well, because when you're doing a training load and, and you know, cause we usually do workup sets, you know, so, you know, if they're working at 75% and, and they're not hitting their number, that gives them an idea during, during the season, like, Hey, I'm, I just need to stay where I'm at or take a little weight off the bar because our next set, we were going to take 80% and I'm, I'm just down today, whether, you know, it was somebody that rushed the ball 25 times in a, in a game or, you know, versus the kid that didn't use just on the sideline, you know, didn't play at all. So, those kind of things in season are, are really critical to to be able to kind of manage training load for them um, during the seasons. Um, yeah, the season. yeah. Auto regulating is and kind of combined with testing gets really interesting, and mm -hmm. it does just regardless of the technology. Yeah, it kind of hinges on that real time feedback. Yeah, like the more data I can get in the moment. Yeah just I can make decisions off of that because yeah. I certainly didn't play, didn't play at any level near you. Yeah. Um, but like, I remember going in after Friday night football games and having carried the ball a fair amount mm -hmm. and not being very brisk getting <laughs> around the track. And we didn't really yeah. need anything to, we didn't need yeah, you cameras do. to quantify that. You do. You I do. just wanted to get to the game film and eat a donut and uh, have the soreness uh, slowly eek out of me. Um, so working at Gardner now, um, like, like, what are your thoughts on, like, are you, are you, do you feel like you're in a pretty good spot, like a sweet spot? Do you have, like, how do you compare that to like when you were in that private setting? Um, cause it just, you experienced a range of populations yeah. and I'm sure there's a bit of give and take, but yeah. Is it just purely about the process or do you think you have a certain niche like age group that, that you enjoy working with more? Um, I mean, I think I do. I, I think that I really enjoy that developing athlete um, from the, you know, starting from the beginning and working up, like getting a student that has never had a barbell in their hand before and teaching them, how to move their body in that process of that. I think, I think that is, is where I feel like I can probably have the biggest impact. Um, you know, I think it's, and there's some, there's some great coaches out there that are having really big impact on, on, on kids because they are doing, doing things the right way and they're taking their time and, and they're, they're teaching um, things and they're, they're concerned about movement quality and exercise selection and all those things that, are just going to give the kids the best chance to, to um, not only improve their performance, but stay as healthy as possible and all those things. So I, I think now, like, and I, and, and when I had owned my own business, I worked with mainly high school students. Um, you know, I had pros or kids that developed into pros and those things that, as we went, but the majority of the kids I was working with were then, I think in that, that setting, that business, I don't know that parents always understand how important the very beginning of the process is for their, for their, their athlete or their, their uh, son or daughter. And, you know, if you, if you get them the year three or four, and sometimes if they haven't, don't have, it doesn't have a, they don't have a good foundation, then it's, it's just trying to re kind of rework everything. Well, it's back to that window you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Like to yeah. some degree, like, yeah. you know, unfortunately, like yeah. it's entirely possible that some of the best athletes in the world are people we've never seen play. Yes. Yes. Cause no, they yeah. develop late or yeah. foundationally like just the fundamentals of whatever sport yeah. they love came late. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think, you know, my, 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 uh, my girls, my, my oldest has just turned 11. So she's starting I've done a little bit of work with her and taught her just some of the, you know, some of the patterns and some of the exercises. She's a gymnast. So like if I get a gymnast in our weight room here, they usually are great movers. 
They yeah. just, you know, they just know how to move their body. And they've been, they've been taught those things. And, and that's a great foundational thing for kids. I feel like if, I mean, if you're, if you go through gymnastics for a while, like they'll come in and they, you, they can bend and they can, they can, they're coachable and they, they know uh, body positions and all those things. So um, looking at those, those kind of things too, um, it are, is interesting for me when working with certain populations and then you're like, Oh, or you ask them, or like, do you ever do gymnas gymnastics before? And they're like, oh, yeah, I've done it for three years. I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought, you know. Like, so it's pretty it's pretty interesting when you see that. Um, or dance, you know, sometimes dance is the same thing. Like, you know, did you do dance? I'll go, yeah, I did dance or whatever. So You can yeah. definitely see an enhanced, <laughs> and kind of an enhanced movement quality. Yeah. For yeah. lack of a better way of putting yeah. it. Um, yeah, for so sure. So did you, um, like, how have you handled that as a parent? So obviously you've got this rich mm -hmm. sports background and, you know, it sounds like it was across you and your brothers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, was it, was there any, I can, I'll, I'll start by, here's how I did, did it. Like there was probably some gentle, Hey, let's go in the backyard and do this. Right. <laughs> but then it was like, like, what are you interested in exploring? Yeah. So we made yeah. a lot of trips to a variety of fields, courts, <laughs> et cetera. Yeah. Um, is that was that your experience as well as a parent? Or yeah, yeah. I I usually just would either try to make it like something was in their mind competitive, or or just kind of trick them into to, to like <laughs> oh you know like but or or I would I would just ask them like you want to try something you know when we used to have the old uh, it's like the CrossFit wide like the bar like the the little the little bar and it's like plastic weights like they sell yeah, it. Yeah, they're yeah. like a little med ball and stuff so i used to have that and i was like i try to teach them how to do an rdl and then they set up and i just would just kind of give them a little touch we weren't training it was just you know maybe that day they'd work on it you know and we try to get that and then a month and a half would go by and we all right let's see if you can do a do that this and then they kind of do that that day and another month would go by you know and it was just kind of Introduce, hey, let's see how far you can jump out here. Like, dude, jump out here, and, you know, and then another six months to go by, and then we do, you know, so it was just little, I would just kind of do little things like that. You're kind of planting some seeds. It's planting some seeds, because those are all things that I was interested in, and and but my, my girls are different, you know, like, you know, one of them's a little bit more, like, plays with dolls, and uh, you know, those kind of things, and, but she's pretty, I mean, she's a pretty good athlete. She just isn't as engaged with doing those things and then my older one she's more competitive like she isn't she's not going to play with dolls she that isn't crazy about wearing dresses and doing that sort of thing so so she's a little more competitive so how i interact and uh, from from a, from that side of it is a little bit different for those two but well sure yeah i mean just see, you're just still their dad and, and they're two different people so that, yeah, that makes yeah. total sense yeah for sure um yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to me, like, in talking with coaches, just how they handle, like, because you end up talking about family. Yeah. And it's just a little different than in, in how you end up seeing your own kids, right? Or just mm -hmm. My son, for example, also a very late bloomer. Like, I have this picture, soccer player in college, uh -huh. and he's just, you know, two-thirds the size of the rest of his team. Yeah. And so, like, we would do basic training stuff, but he kind of grew up as a league form was going. Uh -huh. um, and so then he goes off to school, and uh, soccer players, uh, often not the biggest fans of getting under a bar, <laughs> right? Yeah. But he does and really enjoys it. And so then he is sort of helping his teammates, right? And so just the other day, he got a text from his buddy Tim because uh, – Tim finally hit 300 on a squat. Yeah. And so, you know, my son texts me, proud moment. Yeah. And I didn't say it's to him, and now I'm recording it. But uh, I was <laughs> like, it's a proud moment for two of us. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. yeah. No, so that's always fun. Yeah. Um, and regardless, like, it's – there's something healthy about teaching him those little things anyway. Yeah, and I think – and it's such a – I mean, from just from a life to, a lifelong thing as far as – knowing how to train or having a passion to do that just from a general health standpoint is 
is so important. So I, I just think, again, just try to plant those seeds and, and hopefully they, you know, like during our quarantine, it was like, Hey, I, we're bored. Like, would, would you want to do this? Oh yeah, we'll do that. And then it was a time where it was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this right now. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like you're, you're 11 and eight. So I'm oh, not, absolutely. I'm not, you know, I, it's whatever, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so, well, yeah, there's always a point where if you forced it too much, it's going to back. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, you had mentioned earlier, um, that like you'd worked with a lot of, a lot of good coaches and you kind of, you know, said that, um, you know, you learned a lot from them, but who were some of those people? Like, like who are some folks that like would re be kind of mentors in the sense of when you got out of the game, how you now train athletes? Cause that's always interesting me there. There's always these networks, right? Yeah. And then you can kind of end up seeing uh, a little bit of that in sort of the people that look up to them. So, yeah. Um, you know, Coach Boucher, obviously, you know, being in high school, that was my first. Well, man, just because he was texting you. Did he just text you right now and, and well, try I, to get a I shout out? I don't see it. I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I, but I will say, you know, that that was kind of the start, you know. Um, when I got to K-State, uh, we had a, a coach, his name's Coach Cole, and Rod Cole is his name. And um, he was, I mean, he was a really, really, he's a really good strength coach. And, you know, as far as my background in training, like I, I, I did, you know, I wasn't an Olympic lifter, but, you know, we did cleans and, you know, um, some, some, you know, I, maybe just some snatches and some, some things like that, but front squat back, just, just the core exercises, those things. And then I ran track and I was a thrower. So I, I threw the shot put and I threw the discus my junior and my senior year and I sprinted. So like, and I was always interested in jumping because I always wanted to, you know, dunk a basketball and do all those things. So Hand during, raised, yeah. during, during the winter, <laughs> during the winter, we used to just have open gym in there and I'd go in there and I just, just jump for an hour and, and do basketball and play. So like, that's kind of my philosophy for my training. Like those are the things that interest me, you know, I will, the speed side and, you know, coach Cole, we had speed school twice a week that we you know we did when I was there, you know, um, we, we threw med balls and we did those things when we were there. And then we had a good a balanced strength program with, Olympic lifts in there and our, our uh, powerlifting movements and our accessory work and all, all, all the things that a great program has. So going there, it was from my development standpoint, I got there and I got better. I got stronger. I got faster. I got more explosive. Um, and then uh, as far as like uh, in the NFL, like I, I, the first, the first coach I had in the NFL his, his name is Al Miller, and he's a, a legend. I mean, Al Miller's a, a legend in the profession. And Coach, Mil Coach Miller, um, a little bit more Olympic-based, but very similar. And and a Charlie, I didn't know this at the time, but a, a little bit of Charlie Francis undertones of kind of how th things we did things. Um, so we, we trained Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, and – we did speed work on Monday. I mean, we just did true speed work on Monday. And then we um, did our lift afterwards. And then Tuesday we'd lift and we would do our tempo runs. And then uh, Wednesday we'd be off. And then Thursday we would do change the direction or speed work or something. And then we would do our lift. And then Friday we would lift and we'd do tempo runs. And that that's really kind of what I do. You know, like that's – that's that's the kind of the system I run as far as the running and the lifting and how we do it and you know the exercises are var would vary the intensities vary but just the that's that's what we do we're going to sprint we're going to do jumps we're going to lift we're going to do Olympic lifts we're going to do our core lifts um, and uh, and we're and we're going to do uh, just our our conditioning is a lower intensity in conditioning so. Um, and then I, and I had, I've had other great coaches during that process, but as far as like my, I think my philosophy, um, you know, there's a ton, a ton, a ton of people. Um, well, everyone's often saying that they steal bits and pieces oh, from, yeah. you know, from anyone yeah. they can. Um, yeah. but it's 
like you and and you alluded to it just when you were saying that you you start to see like okay i i know coach x but now i'm seeing you use the word undertones which i thought was perfect now i'm understanding that now that i've learned about this guy over here i can see how that all came about so yeah and i and and coach and coach miller they they wrote a he wrote a book he was a co-author on on a book called the system and i just i just read it last last year sometime and i was like oh (laughs) you know like i was able to kind of put those things together kind of what we were doing at at that time and and kind of the 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 system behind how they were doing the programming so and again um I had uh, Coach Dow Ripple with the with the Saints, and and he he was great. I saw I saw Coach Woodfin was on earlier. I saw yeah. him clap on there, and he was when when I went out to athletes performancing the Carson California. He was he was out there. And I got to 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 be around him some. So there have been cool. just a ton of people, and 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 it's so nice because you know in this profession, these people are so gracious with you know their time and their knowledge and 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 sharing those things and it's 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 uh it's pretty cool to to just all the people i've been around oh absolutely i mean selfishly that's why we started doing this podcast right like yeah i mean i don't get to talk to you very often um Mm -hmm. but every time i do i'm like damn like i always enjoy the conversation right so i mean you can call it a marketing thing, but it's just kind of an excuse to catch up to the people that I like, with, with people that I like. Um, yeah. Doug Bouchel, how would you Doug that too? <laughs> but, uh, so where did, or when did like velocity based stuff hit your radar? Like, did someone just have a Tendo unit lying around or, or how did that happen? Um, again, I'm gonna have to bring up Doug. <laughs> Because I went back to Smith Center, and he had a rack with Elite Form on it, and I was like, I was like, man, that's that's awesome. And then, you know, Coach Hootie, like, like at KU, they they had, and I was seeing all the work that she was doing with it, and I just really thought the the concept behind it. So, so I, I think it was maybe. I just maybe moved into the new facility maybe year three or, or year four. And I was like, that was a big Christmas present for, for me to be able to put those. Gotcha. In. And, and again, we, we did Tendo um, with coach Miller. We used Tendo when I was there. Um, uh, coach, coach from uh, Vermeil. It came in a couple times. We did, we did, uh, Tendo when he was there. There's he another was, legend. He, he was doing some stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. That's another Yeah. Unbelievable. So so anyway, so that those were kind of like my I guess that was my first experience with velocity based training was at that time when I was in Atlanta. And we were just looking at power and at wattage and having having something to, to, to try to, to beat. Sure. You know? So that was my first that was my first first uh, time being around it. Gotcha. Well, even though you were on before Doug, he's come up several times, so he should, he should feel pretty good about yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, I'm sure he won't talk about me at all when, when if, I, if you get him on here. Well, I, I'm, I'm learning how to ask leading questions, so uh, <laughs> we can <laughs> we'll make sure. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm scouring the internet to try to be prepared. And I come across this video of when you're with the Eagles, you actually taking a kick. Yeah. So uh, I'm surprised I hadn't come across that before because it's not like we've only worked together for five minutes um, on stuff. But how did that come about? Because I actually, when I saw it, I said, you know, it says Semino. It was, yeah. was it an extra point or a field goal? It was an extra point. I, I now, thought now, there must now, be somebody nowadays, else. Nowadays, it's a, it's it's farther. It's I don't know what it is now. It's like thirty five. Thirty five, like yeah. So I don't know if that would have if it's today. I don't know if I'm playing today. I don't know if that would happen or not. So, um, 
it basically, I, I kicked in high school. I kicked off. I did extra points in high school. We're in, we're in, in Philadelphia. And they're like, has, has anybody in here kicked before? Because we need a backup kicker. And I'm like, well, I used to kick in high, high school. So they go out there and they set it up and snap it. And I kick it. I make the first one. All right. Make the second one. They move me back a little bit and make another one. So, like, that was basically me winning the job. <laughs> that was a little, like a little trial. That was, that, was, that was the trial. So, David. And he, and he hurts his hamstring and he's out. Like he is out for the game. So we're playing San Francisco and I'm, they're like, you, are you ready to kick this? I'm like, uh, I guess so. And so <laughs> I, I have to be. The net and, I'm, and I like take one swing and they're like, you got to get out there. So I, I run out there and kick, kick it, goes through the uprights. And I didn't kick off in that, uh, we, we had another kickoff guy, but that was it. So then the next week, the next week, and you probably don't know this because this wasn't on YouTube. The next week, Akers is like, I'm good to go. I, I can play. I'm like, man, I, I know every time I hurt my hamstring, it usually wasn't better in a week. But he plays, first kickoff, hamstring, gone. out again. So we kick again on the second one. And the second, the second week, I kick it and I like hit the back of like one of our offensive linemen, like a ball hits into the back. Oh. So that was that was the end of my kicking career. Was was uh, that? But it's a pretty is a pretty cool, cool thing to be able to hit it. It's absolutely cool. cool. So it's, when I and, the high, when I coach the high schools, they're always like, you know, you realize this guy was a kicker in the NFL. Like, so like to be for our, for our guys that are kicking, like I'm going to give them pointers on how to do it. I'm like, no. As long as that second one stays off of YouTube. You're yeah, oh, you're fine. It's fine. You're golden. Cool. Yeah, it's fine. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we only have a few more minutes before Instagram will kick us off because it's got like an hour limit. Oh, it's an hour. Well, that's something else I learned today. Well, uh, <laughs> I didn't. When we first started doing podcasts, I always liked to do them in person, and uh -huh. that way you can talk about whatever you want. You can take us yeah. like I always made the Fight Club joke: like podcasts will go on as long as they have to instead of fights, right? Yeah. And so that, and plus then people are just less worried. Like they're just relaxed because if, yeah. if I say something dumb, we can edit it out. Right. <laughs> um, and so then of course COVID hits yeah. and it, it, it just had to be changed. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's just different. Like I'd rather shoot baskets with you and talk yeah. you know, like in your backyard with that court. Um, just, Uh, go from there, but um, do you think uh, like how are things down there in terms of getting back woods is um, yeah. are things tracking well down there? Um, well, today we got some positive news. So we weren't we're starting we starting school remote, and then um, we were not going to play because of the gating criteria. But today we got news that we will start practice tomorrow. So that's, that is good news for our kids. And um, nice. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's exciting news. We just, we just literally got that news at one thirty today. So we're kind of like scrambling a little bit to get ready for practice tomorrow um, with football. So, um, but all the, all the fall sports are going to be able to go. Um, and again, that's, it's just been such an up and down time, right. you know, you know, it's a lot of highs and lows, probably more lows than highs, but today was a, was a high for us. And, you know, coming back in the summer and be able to have an opportunity to train in July, most of July, and then you know, a little bit of August was a, was a high for, for us um, and the kids. So, so we'll take those things and, and we'll, you know, enjoy every moment we get, um, get with them and, and they get the opportunity to be around each other, around the coaches and, getting to compete. So right. I'm pretty excited, pretty fired up about that. It's kind of the best we can do right now. So I'm glad to, glad to hear you're able to get back at it to some degree. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to plant this seed. We'll do a round two sometime.
but we'll get Doug, Doug involved. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll do a little round table kind of thing. Uh, and it probably will we'll be more banter than like yeah. quality journalistic interview, but I bet it'd be a heck of a lot of fun. So it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be a lot uh, of fun. Let's, no, let's I mean, plan on doing that. Yeah, I'd love that. Outstanding. Well, hey, uh, thanks for doing this. And um, hopefully you can get back at it and there's no pauses or hiccups. And the next time we're ta we talk, we're worried about like progressions and, uh, you know, you're able to get some time with the guys like you want. So yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Skip. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Mark. All right, talk soon. Care. See you.